Hi everybody, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about uh, how I make my InDesign workspace and how I set my InDesign workspace and save it so it's always the way I like it. Now look, everyone does their workspace a little differently and so hopefully you can take something from me. While this might be directed towards beginners, I think anyone can get something from looking at other people. Working with different schools and colleges, I constantly see other people's setups and I often take something from there and put it into mine. So hopefully everyone can get something out of it. I'm gonna show you how to um, set up your workspace, how to customize it, how to save it, and a few little tips and tricks that I like to use in InDesign for my workspace. And at the end, I'm gonna show you a script that uh, I love and I'll put the, the link to where to find it uh, in the video. So let's check it out. So here's my screen. This is just a little template that we have um, set up that we give to some of our customers. A little, It's like a little um, you know, uh, comic book theme, whatever. But I'm just gonna have this open. So when you download InDesign, chances are it's gonna show you Essentials. It might show you Essentials Classic, um, but it's a, it just depends on what you're doing. Obviously, if you're doing lots of typesetting for books, I do lots of pictures um, and text in pictures, and so how I set mine up is a little different. One of the biggest benefits is that if you're working with a class or a group of people at a business, everyone having at least a standard workspace that, that, that you can explain to other people how to do stuff, I think really helps because you're all looking at a similar concept. Uh, people might have their own workspaces they like to work in, but if you were to be working with another person, it's nice to know that you tell them to go find this tool that it's actually right there. So this is how I like to do it. I like to go to Essentials Classic, and this is kind of where I start. A lot of people I deal with are on little tiny computers, and so I always like to maximize the space on a laptop. So I start off by just being able to see enough to be able to see some of this stuff over here. Sometimes it'll show this to you over here in two columns, I hit this little button to make it in one column. So, cause if you're on a laptop, every little inch counts. Obviously I'm on a much bigger screen, so I can, you know, fly out panels and do stuff everywhere. But this is how I normally set stuff up uh, for myself. Cause this is how I end up setting it up for my uh, clients. So over here, you've got character styles, paragraph styles, effects, preflight, whatever you plan on using, I would put it there. Now I'm gonna fly out character styles because uh, most of my schools don't use that, though some of them do. Um, and I leave paragraph styles because a lot of times they will use these. Um, and I usually will set these for them. Um, and if, for those that don't know, I mean basically like this, you know, the size of this font, the color of this font, the type of font, all that is something. So you see it says basic paragraph plus because I have something selected. So I could just save this uh, style, I could just save this style, um, new paragraph style, and it would save all the stuff about this title and I could click any text box and it would convert it to this size font and all that stuff. So anyway, I was a little bonus information for you. Um, I like to have the pre-flight here. Sometimes this pre-flight will be down here, right? And so what I do is I will come down here, click pre-flight panel, that's this little red light, green light, and I turn that on. Now, if you're using basic working pre-flight panel, it shows you some stuff, but there's a lot better pre-flight. And I'll make another video about setting a pre-flight that works for you. But uh, at least the pre-flight panel is here. So when you have errors, I always tell my schools, make the light green. Um, and so that, you know, that will cover a lot of problems in a project if you just keep that light green. So we wanna make sure we got stuff going on in here. The swatches, obviously I've got Lots of swatches in here. You probably in a typical project will only have a, a handful of swatches. Um, one trick that I typically do for those of you, you know, who are a little more avid users, obviously anytime you're doing text, you're using this black swatch right here, right? So this is the black swatch. Um, if you can see it's zero, uh, zero, zero, 100. If you were to actually make a big black square, and fill it in with this color and print it, it would actually look kind of gray, right? If you wanted a super, super black, you would need a type of super black. Um, registration black is, is, is a lot of times used and I hate when they do that because obviously you can't print that and if you did, it wouldn't look good. So I take this registration, I usually pull it down to the bottom and then I'll actually kind of like <laughs> do something like that. And then when I give my, my schools their master pages, I'm like, well, at least they'll, the chances of them, you know, it, and if I don't want them using a super black, I'll do the same. I'll take this super, or I'll just delete the super black out of there. But you can't delete registration. And you can't use registration, okay, to 
put any black on your document, okay? That's, it's for other purposes, uh, not for actually like printing that. So um, anyway, so I like to hide that. So that's what I do. So I set the swatches up the way I like. I delete any swatch that I don't really need. You can select the swatch and hit the little delete so that you're not having tons of different colors and everybody's got their, their right colors up on there. Um, another thing that I like to do is I like to put this effects here. If you don't see this here, I mean, you can find it up here in the windows panel, um, to effects and then it'll pop up and then you just simply grab it and stick it over here. I used to use the info tab, but now I like to take my links panel and like I thought all my settings are saved, even though I tried to reset, I guess I should reset classic, huh? It's what I probably should have started off with. Um, I should have started with the reset class. I was like, this is not what classic normally looks like. All right, that's probably closer to what you guys started off with. So you can fly out panels and move them pretty much anywhere. So I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna just load the panel here. I do like use my CC library for stuff and I'm gonna show you that. I don't use this color swatch. This is more of an RGB tool. I mean, you can use it for other things, but uh, I just prefer the swatches. They're like a, a little easier to use and I'm looking for them. I know they're, uh, but luckily on a Mac, when I forget where something is, I can just look for swatches, right? And so you see, I had to go to color swatches and actually will show you. That's one benefit to a Mac. PCs, I don't know why they don't do that. Maybe they'll do that in the future, um, you know, but. I open up that swatches panel and I keep it over there because I, I like it over there. Um, in my links panel, I really like to add this thing in my panel options. So over here, I always add effective PPI, okay? This tells me the exact number of dots per inch for each photo that's that's dropped in the book. And uh, that's super helpful and I'll uh, show you why in a second, but you can see right here, we need 300 dots per inch for something to print good. Now this is just a color picture uh, that we have in here, but um, it's again, you know, ooh, jump into the other page. Okay, that's one of my other master pages that apparently have some errors on there. And we'll talk about that in a second and we'll miss in link. Um, all right, so we've got um, my links panel. I like to add this. If you can't see the number, you can make this a little bigger, you can even move this around. So if you want to see the dots per inch up front, uh, this is where those things are located. The B and the D are referring to these master pages that are uh, in here in the background, okay? I'm not talking about that today, but just kind of showing you how I lay it out. So I keep my CC library in there and I do like those styles. So like I mentioned before, character style, paragraph style, see it? gives me this fly out panel. I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna get rid of this character style and toss it and I'm gonna stick this paragraph style right here. Already talked about paragraph styles a little bit earlier. So I'm just kind of giving you a little rundown. See what I'm doing right here though? See how I'm like making this a little smaller, pulling this down so I can see my stuff. This is all the kind of stuff that I set up my clients with because as silly as that might sound, it's like just making sure they can see the colors. All this stuff gets saved. Um, I'm gonna come down here again. I'm gonna click that pre-flight profile. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna stick it right there. Uh, I'm gonna apply the right paragraph style that I want for this project. Make sure that light's green and keep rocking and rolling. So um, the stroke is there if you use that. Um, so I'm gonna come back up here for my effects again. I'm just gonna toss that in there. So any anything that you typically use, you know, in your project or with your team, you can you can put there. And as you find new stuff, you can of course add it to your to your profile the way that you like it. You know, um, just trying to maximize space and just kind of keep only the stuff you really need here, opposed to other stuff. You know, that might confuse you if there's just too much stuff going on. So this is the way I like to have it set up. When I kind of get to where I want to go, uh, one thing I don't have actually is my scripts panel. So since I'm going to show you a script at the end of this for sticking around, give you a free little script here that I love. I didn't make it, but I'll show you where you can access it. So, um, and if you don't want any, like if you're not, you're not going to use data merge, you know, some people will use data merge. You keep it in there. If you're not using it, you don't need it. Just get rid of it. it makes it a little, a little cleaner for you. All right. Save and close all open documents. I love that because I'm often have lots of tabs. I only got three open right now, but um, 
All right, so when I'm done getting everything set kind of the way that I want it, and I, I like this, you come down here to drop down and you hit new workspace. And you can title it kind of whatever you want. So you can, I'm just gonna call this uh, sample two. And it saves your panel and it saves your menu customizations and all that other stuff. And you hit okay, and there you are, sample two. Now, if you're working on this and you know, you're doing stuff and all of a sudden like you know something weird happens like see I just got that uh this this ruler thing just disappear you know and you probably like pulling out rulers and making sure everything is all lined up uh, you can pull stuff down from out here and line it up across if you're on this page it only lines it up on this side but if you pull it out here in the in the pasteboard area you can get a little ruler straight across so if, if you like doing all that kind of stuff um you know, and that ruler disappears or this panel disappears or this thing disappears and like everything you know is like gone and you're like, oh, what happened? I had my whole thing set up and I messed something up. Well, you can just come up here and just hit reset sample two and everything goes back to the, the way that you had it before. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, so you can reset that. You can switch between different profiles. So like, you know, if if multiple people use your computer, like Jim and Jane, you can just switch between the people's workspaces that they prefer. Um, and so it's a great way to just keep your stuff customized and you know where you expect it to be. So that's pretty much it. Um, simple, quick video, save and close all open documents. Just check this little guy out here. If you've never installed a script before, I know this is usually for beginners, so I'll just say this real quick. When I click this, it just closes all my documents. But when you get a new script, you just download a script from the internet, the, the little trick to installing it is when you right click here like under user or something like that and it says reveal in finder or reveal in explorer if you're on a PC. So it actually opens up where all these are. So you just take the thing you downloaded off the internet and you just paste it right here. That's, that's it, that's the secret sauce, nothing too crazy. You just paste the thing here. Uh, relink all documents in a book, package for archive. I mean, these are all my different scripts that I use all the time and I'll talk about them. But save and close all open documents. I'll leave the link below to wherever I got that from. When you click it, it's super cool because it'll save everything. Now, this was an old, this is a InDesign 2022. Because this file was originally an older file, it's gonna ask me to save it and I'll say save and replace. Um, so, sorry about that. But when you update to a new InDesign version, uh, it'll do that. But um, the next time you you know, you know use save and close, a lot of times I'll have 20, 30 documents open at one time. So uh, that's basically why that is helpful. So anyway, please like and subscribe on the channel. I have playlists for new advisors, playlists for eventually for classes. Um, so just find a playlist that works for you. Just in design, you're not even like doing student publications and you have no, you know, uh, classes or anything like that. Go ahead and just uh, find the, the playlist that you like. Just in design tips and stuff like that and keep, a, keep up to date. Have a great day. Bye.